Tonight I'm filling a very special place in my box. Uh, I'm replacing a fly that my friend Doug Bear showed me on the Asable years ago. The Asable is not his home river, it's mine. But he used this to catch just a pile of fish on a May evening. Uh, at the end of the night he gave me one and I've been copying it ever since. This fly is called a wonder bug. The, the one he gave me, I don't know if they were Doug's modifications or maybe that's how it's supposed to be tied, but anyway, it differs from the wonder bugs I've seen on the internet slightly. And so I've copied Doug's version and whoever invented the wonder bug, well, thank you. It has proven to be a great fly. Uh, flies tied on a scud hook. I'm making this rendition of it look like a Hendrickson, which is what Doug's looked like. And it worked really well last year, just like it worked a couple years back for Doug. Uh, and I've carried it ever since. I tied it in a, in a 14 scud and a 16 scud. This is the Fulling Mill 5065 check nymph hook, which works real well for this. So I start with uh, Antron yarn. Um, you can use any kind of poly floating yarn. And just a little shuck, maybe half the length of the body, maybe a little less than that even. And then I'm just gonna build up the back end of the hook. So from the, the, the we'll keep talking about the top point of the hook here. Back, we're gonna get it built up because we're just gonna use a quill. You can use a turkey biot or a peacock quill. I'm gonna use a peacock quill. This is the uh, Polish quill in olive. But the olive makes a real nice Henderson color. And again, this fly, I suppose it's imitative, but I think it's just, it suggests a whole bunch of flies. Um, caddis, stonefly, uh, but I think definitely caddis. And of course, oh, I frayed my thread there. I'll wrap over that. Um, and of course mayflies. So I'm covering up the the peacock portion that's left on these and clipping it and then hopefully when I wrap this it'll cover up some of those frayed thread ends I just left there. And if not we'll go in and clip them. So this is a great step to use hackle pliers but as often happens I don't and so I'm just kind of using my fingers to force it into position. I'm tying it down. Uh, I do like that to, to look segmented. And both the biots and the Polish quill do a good job of that. All right, so now the cool part of this fly is it's got a CDC hump in the middle of it. I'm going to use two CDC feathers. I think you can use puffs quite well for this. I just haven't. I've always used the full, the full feather, well two full feathers. And I tie them in facing back like that. Clip. And now we're going to use some natural beaver dubbing. I have seen in looking on the internet that some folks tying wonder bug or wonder bug variations use a bright dubbing in this step for the thorax but the fly I fished last year and the fly I got from Doug had just kind of a, a nice muted gray color there we go and like I said this was just killer during the the Hendrickson's and also like those warm May evenings if we ever get those uh, when it seems like the rivers just exploded with insect life. This is such a great place to start. Now we're going to make a ball by forming a loop with the CDC. You can be pretty proud with this one. Pinch wrap. So what I do is I bring the thread up between my thumb and index finger and hold it. So right now it's held between my thumb and index finger. Wrap around and slide it down. And I'll work back. Make sure a nice big hump of CDC there. Kind of organize the rest and just clip them off. And then we're going to clip these back end pieces too. All right. 
Now, on the hump is gonna rest some loose deer hair. Why I'm loose is it's not stacked. It's just got kind of a nice natural look to it, almost like a um, La Fontaine caddis uh, emergent sparkle caddis emerger. Those. I think I said that emergent twice there, but anyway, it has that kind of loose little deer hair thing going on. So I'll measure it like that, hold it by the eye so that half the deer hairs above the top of the hump and the other half below, switch hands and clip. Get that nice and even. Come in, soft wrap, soft wrap and then flare. We want that to stand up. The hump kind of, the, the CDC hump there holds it up. A couple more break free. Super buggy look already. And now we're gonna go through those tips. Excellent. And back with the beaver dub on the head. I just love flies like this. This fly reminds me of an old Hat Creek fly called the Hatchmaster, which which had a forward deer hair wing for a cripple, kind of like a Quigley. Um, although I, my guess is the Hatchmaster came first. That's a great fly. I should do a video of that because I still fish that fly when I remember to tie it. Sometimes you get these flies are they're such old favorites that you assume you always have them in your box and then you you realize you don't. And that's it. A little dubbing up front, form ahead, whip finish, and off you go. Not a hard fly to tie, but sure is an easy fly to fish, and it's nice to have a fly where it's almost like they deserve a separate box when there's a bunch of stuff happening and fish rising. You know, those great days. And on those great days, this is such a good bug to start with. On our rivers, it's, it's any time after April 25th, if it's water temps over 50 and there's bugs hatching, uh, the wonder bug as shown to me by Doug Bear is a good one.